rather take it for granted these days that even an old village like this should have all the public services. The telephone, for example, the bank, electric lighting, a bus service, a postal service, and there's nothing strange about there being a Ford dealer there too, for the service he offers takes its place today with all the other public services. Perhaps I'd better introduce myself. My name is Leslie Mitchell, my car is being serviced across the road. When I took my car into the Ford dealers just now, I couldn't help noticing the way in which I was received. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I want to make sure, service. Can you do it right away? I'll just check up, sir. Thanks. The receptionist was not only smart and well-groomed, but he was also extremely pleasant. I don't mean any kind of servile politeness. He gave me the impression of being one of those men who are proud of their jobs and welcome any opportunity of showing it. Can you spare us three quarters of an hour? Surely, and while you're about it, will you give it a general check over? Very good, sir. Thanks. We all know the sort of garage where you drive in, blow your horn, and nothing happens at all. Then at last a greasy individual comes up wiping his hands, obviously very busy at something else, showing plainly that it isn't really his job to find out what you want. Well, you can see for yourself there was nothing of that sort of thing here. Frankly, this unusual mixture of courtesy and efficiency had begun to intrigue me, so I introduced myself to the dealer and had a chat with him. As I looked around the premises, I complimented him on the layout. I particularly noticed the white lines, reminding everybody concerned that the cars passed from one service department to another with the greatest possible economy of floor space and manpower. These particular premises started life as a riding school, and they seem still to retain in their bearing the dignity of those well-ordered days. This is neither the biggest Ford dealers in the country, nor is it the most modern building. The point is that it does follow the standards laid down to which all Ford dealers conform. The dealer told me that this question of layout is actually part of his contract with the Ford Motor Company. The stores, for example, are set up in such a place that the men can easily draw the parts they need with the minimum of distance to go from where they're working. All material arrives through its own entrance to the stores. Nothing is left lying about on the floors of the service bays. My friend pointed out to me that all dealers are required by their contract to have special equipment as part of the standard workshop practice. These tools, for instance, have been designed to carry out the work with the greatest possible speed and efficiency. Every Ford dealer has them. Another special piece of equipment is the test set which the mechanic was using on my car. This makes a complete diagnosis of the engine in the space of a few minutes. At this particular moment, the removal of a plug enabled him to test the compression. Rather like the doctor testing a patient's blood pressure. And like the doctor, the mechanic was able to read the exact pressure on a dial. But the dials on the test set tell the mechanic much more than this. They tell him the condition of the plugs, the points of the distributor, the output of the coil and the dynamo, and the correctness of the tuning. And within the space of a few moments, all these results are noted down. In due course, my car went up onto the hoist in the lubrication bay, and while the lubrication job was being attended to, a mechanic took the opportunity of getting under the car to give it the inspection I'd specially asked for, as well as the make sure service. It seemed to me that there couldn't be a great deal of profit to the dealer out of the make sure scheme. I asked him about this. You can't make very much out of this. They do, in the long run. Thanks to the make sure scheme, I have a couple of thousand customers who come to me regularly. I see. It's the volume of business that builds up. Exactly. Besides, when drivers come to me regularly, I get a real chance to check over the performance of their cars and keep them in good trim. The motorist's happy because he gets better value for money. And you're happy because turnover goes up. Certainly. I'd much rather have a good turnover in a regular line of business like servicing than wait till cars go wrong and then get it the hard way to repair. That sense. Excuse me a moment. Surely.
Incidentally, while I was on the premises, I noticed that nearly all the conversation was on the subject of performance, even in the case of women drivers, of whom several arrived while I was there. A replacement engine going into a car made me ask the dealer how it was that the Ford engine exchange scheme could be run so cheaply. It's a matter of standardization. Not merely is the reconditioned engine you get warranted to give you the same performance as a new engine. To all intents and purposes, it is a new engine, isn't it? Well, let's say as good as. But the special equipment, the layout of the premises, and the train mechanics keep to a minimum the time taken on the exchange. And that permits the low price for the job. Which is particularly important with commercial vehicles, where time off the road means loss of money. And this question of standardization doesn't merely operate in the case of engine exchange. While my car went out for a road test, I went into the office and learned something about the management side. Now, I don't suppose the ordinary motorist worries very much about that. Certainly I don't, or rather I didn't. But let me show you just how this affects you and me. It is this standardization, not only of parts, but of practice, which maintains repair charges at the lowest level and makes it possible to publish this book which tells the Ford owner exactly what the labor charges would be. Parts used, of course, are extra to this, but standardized. And wherever you may be, in England, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, that job will be done in exactly the same way. Identical replacement parts will be used and the time taken will be the same by men who have been trained at the same school under the same system. There are over 300 Ford main dealers in the British Isles and over 1,250 other authorized dealers. It's the function of management in each of these dealerships to see that you and I get the service which these days has become synonymous with the name Ford. Take this question of training mechanics, for example. I saw some certificates hanging on the wall of the office. It was news to me and it may be news to you to know that every single Ford dealer sends his mechanics to the Ford Training School for training in Ford workshop practice. Seeing my interest, the dealer suggested I should go to Dagenham to have a look at the school there next time I was in that part of the world. Before we parted, I made a promise to go. So I kept my promise. Where the great chimneys of the plant rise into the air by the side of the River Thames at Dagenham, housed in a special building some distance away from the main works, is the school where employees of the various dealers throughout the country come to be trained in Ford workshop practice. I hate to harp on the same subject, but the word layout has got to pop up again. The first thing that struck me as I walked around the school was the admirable layout of the place. In one room, for example, the electrical systems of the various types of Ford car are set out in a form which is completely diagrammatic. Each component of the electrical system is workable and the wiring of the entire system can be traced out and studied. In another room, you'll find them at work on the front wheel suspension system. And again, you notice here is the particular subject of study set up completely detached from the rest of the car for easy examination. In another room, we find the back axle. This, too, is separated from the rest of the car for study. And it's when you watch instruction like this that you realize how it is that Ford service comes to you in every part of the country at the same price and always taking the same number of man-hours to perform. Here, method, accuracy, and speed are taught. In another room are various Ford engines stripped down for study. I must confess I had the greatest difficulty in dragging myself away from this room. I could have played here happily for hours. In another room, the various types of tractor are stripped down so that all their running parts can be examined. In most cases, these rooms are attached to a special course. These courses last from one week for a single item to six weeks for a comprehensive course. Among them is a special diagnosis course. And here, I saw them learning to operate my old friend, the diagnosis test set, which I'd seen at my local dealers being used on my car. I was particularly struck when I went to the school by the excellent type of pupils. Possibly the fact that Ford Service offers a good livelihood is responsible for that, because a successful business not only has to give satisfaction to customers, it must give incentive for employees. Between two and three thousand pupils are trained here every year.
It happened when I was there that one of the mobile schools was in for a periodical checkover. These travelling schools, such as the one which you're looking at, are equipped with portable exhibits and tools. Instructors accompany them to various parts of the country where local mechanics take a week's course just as they'd do if they came to the school at Dagenham. If at the end of the course the pupil satisfies the instructor, a certificate is awarded. And it was certificates such as this that I'd seen hanging on the wall at my dealers. Have a look at this chart which hangs on a wall in the school. Here are shown the certificates held by mechanics employed by dealers throughout the country. Each little square on this chart represents a certificate. The squares in different colours show which certificates are more than two years old and due for renewal. I am right, aren't I? As the certificates fall out of date, so the recipients have to come back and qualify for them again. That's right, Mr Mitchell. You see, training at the school isn't something which happens once in a mechanic's life and is then finished forever. Workshop practice is continually being improved. New tools come into use, new models come up the line. Training isn't a fixed thing, so mechanics come back periodically for refresher courses. The training the chaps get here aims at economy of time and labour in workshop practice. And it's this economy which is the prime factor in the low standard rates of Ford repair work. As one example, the engine exchange plan. Exactly. Without training of the kind given here, such a scheme couldn't operate. Well, I must say it's very impressive. Uh, but there are some people who believe that with the special equipment carried by Ford dealers and the elaborate layout of the premises, repairs must cost more. It isn't elaborate. It's the simplest and most practical way of getting the work through quickly and efficiently. I think if anybody doubts that, they ought to come and see for themselves. Well, this being a film, they will see for themselves, won't they? Of course, I'd always forgotten. Sorry about that. Well, I only hope that you have been as interested as I have been in looking behind the scenes of Ford Set, of finding out the reasons for the success of this great national-scale enterprise. So when I collected my car from the dealers, the next time I had it in for servicing, I listened with a new respect to the mechanic's report on what he'd done. And it was with a new sense of value for money that I paid the bill. reflected that when you or I buy a Ford vehicle, we buy more than a vehicle. We buy a way of travel that belongs to the best traditions of English life. The tradition of service, which is as old as the road itself, but as new as the latest Ford car rolling through today into the miles of tomorrow. <laughs>